schools, the new, new schools that you can allow are free schools. And you can't plan for them. You just have to wait until someone pops up and says they want to start a free school. You can't say, right, we can see we've got this baby boom coming. There's this bit of town that's really isolated by this road and that railway line and that's the logical place to put a school. You're actually forced to wait for this pop-up to suddenly happen, hopefully in the right place. Um, so that was a speech I did three or four months ago. And I could, and I probably should, do another whole speech on all of what you can basically call Michael Goh's brainwave 16. <laughs> because, like all too many other bits um, of the way our whole government works, so this is a real issue, absolutely independent of what your political ideology or beliefs are, there is an absolute huge confidence gap in this government. It is government by the back of the envelope, government by ministerial brainwave. Mm. And so, to just pick up some of Mr. Goh's most recent brainwaves, one that's got a lot of attention, if you haven't signed the petition yet, there's actually a couple of petitions out there, do sign one of them, the writing climate change out of the curriculum, mm. which will basically mean that it won't appear until age 14 and you have to study geography to run into it. Mm. You know, that's, you know, and that's just a classic Michael Goh. Um, the one that's popped up in the past week or so is the we're going to have longer school years and longer school days. Mm. Now, you start with the facts of this, which I was looking up actually for question time last night. And at 190 days a year, our school year is actually three days longer than the OECD average anyway. So the idea that you know, our, our kids are all out there slacking off. And you know, if we just drove them all a bit harder, we're going to you know, end up with a better economy, because that's the whole point of the education mm. system, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's, you know, so that needs, needs to be tackled. But I think, you know, philosophically speaking, I'm a school governor. I'm a school governor at a very, very deprived primary school in central London. Basically, the community we serve, or the children we serve, are roughly a half, a third set of Somali, third Bengali and third Eastern European, is we have to get them through to level four by this age and to level five by that age. And the whole success of the school, what I'll see is going to judge the whole lot on, is our exam results. That is what matters. And if the head teacher doesn't deliver on that, they're out. And so what you find is a whole school that is forced to be concentrating on the four pupils in grade three and the three in grade six who have got to push over that line to get them to that standard. Mm -hmm. You know, the really bright kids, well, they're all right, so no one worries about them. The ones who are a long way down in performance, well, we're never going to get them over the line, so that's really sad, but, but it's those ones that are just almost in the line who have got to push them over. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely no way to run an education system. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, you know, very sadly, it's something that Labour is very bad on. You know, free schools grew out of academies, which mm. was a Labour scheme. Yeah. Labour basically swallows wholesale the, the education system is for the economy mm. argument. Yeah. And there's an awful lot to do. Trust. <laughs>